Hello everyone, this video is for the carving of mandibular first premolar and as you can see we have wax block and I have marked the midline on each surface also uh, labeled it as labial lingual mesial and distal now take uh, 8.5 mm for the crown length and 14.0 mm for the root and we have to divide the crown part in three equal thirds that is occlusal, middle and cervical third now for the mesodistal diameter of the crown at cervix we have to take 5.0 mm and 7.0 mm at the contact area that will be measured from the scale from the divider now we'll draw these lines to get a trapezoidal shape and we'll do the same on lingual side also now we have to remove the extra part Now for the uh, buckle cusp raises, meso buckle and distal buckle, uh, we have to draw a line like this. The meso buckle cusp raise is shorter than the distal buckle cusp raise. So, and we have to remove the extra part to get that shape. Now for the labiolingual or buccolingual diameter of the crown, we have to take 7.5 mm at the contact area and 6.5 mm at the cervix. Now we'll carve the buccal surface and we have to carve such that we'll get the buccal ridge. The middle buccal lobe makes up the major bulk of the tooth crown and the buckle ridge is prominent and also the marginal ridges are well developed so we have to carve like that Now we'll carve the lingual surface. The lingual cusp is small and the crown 
converge is sharp with the center of the lingual surface so we have to carve like that The usual outline form of the mandibular first premolar from the occlusal aspect is roughly diamond shaped and similar to the incisal aspect of mandibular canines. So the occlusal surface harbors two depressions. These are mesial and distal fossa. Because of their irregular form, even though they correspond in location to mesial and distal triangular fossa of other posterior teeth. We'll carve the mesial fossa and also the mesial developmental groove which extends buccolingually. These grooves we have to carve. The mesial developmental groove is confluent with its extension which becomes the mesolingual developmental groove as it passes over the mesolingual surface. Uh, the distal fossa is more circular in most cases and is circumscribed by the distal buccal cusp ridge, distal marginal ridge, the buccal triangular ridge and the distal lingual cusp ridge. Uh, distal fossa may contain a distal developmental groove uh, that is crescent shaped and it may harbor a distal developmental pit with accessory supplemental grooves radiating from it. But in most common type of mandibular first premolar, it will show a mesolingual developmental depression and groove that we have to carve. The occlusal surface shows a heavy buccal triangular ridge and a small lingual triangular ridge. So now we have got the crown part of the mandibular first premolar.
Now we'll carve the root portion. The root of this tooth is 3 or 4 mm shorter than that of the mandibular canine. And the lingual side of this root is much narrower and smooth and convex. Now we'll remove the excess part. The root of this tooth tapers evenly from the cervix to a pointed apex. The root outline from the mesial aspect is a tapered from the cervix ending in a relatively pointed apex in line with the tip of the buccal cusp and the lingual outline may be straight, the buccal outline is more curved. The mesial surface of the root is smooth and flat from the buccal margin to the center. The distal surface slopes from the buccal margin towards the center of the root lingually and the surface of the root distally exhibits more convexity than was found mesially and a shallow developmental depression is centered on the root. Now we'll carve the cervical outline. So this was the carving of mandibular right first premolar and please watch my next video for the carving of mandibular second premolar.